Hello, I'm Friendly Man, and today we're going to look at algebraic notation so you can write down your chess games. Then we're also going to look at fin. And if we got some time, I'm going to go over some chess clocks and how they work and what you can do and how you use them. The chessboard has 64 squares on it. Each square has its unique name, and it's ranked by ranks and files. The ranks are the numbers, and files are the letters. Every piece has its own name. The king is K, the queen is Q, the rook is R, the bishop is B, the knight is N. The pawns are the ranks and files. For special moves, we use special lettering. For castling, is 0-0. For a capture, we use the X sign. The first thing I want to show you is this pawn. In the first video I told you about this guy can do a double jump. So, to write down this move is just E4. And that's all you have to do. Now, if there was another piece to, for you to capture, like this rook, this would be E takes D3. Here is a black bishop. If it had to go to this square, it would be B goes to H7. Now if this bishop had to capture something, like if there was a knight here, this would be B captures C6. If I had to write this down, this would be R goes to E8 plus sign because this would be a check. A plus sign means check. But now if this rook had to capture something, this would be R captures E7. R captures E7. this knight here. If it had to move, this would be N goes to F6. N goes to F6. Here's the king. If the king wants to get closer to the black king, it would be K goes to D5. K goes to D5. Here is the queen. If the queen had to go somewhere, this would be Q goes to A5. Q goes to A5. Okay, I want to show you a board position by using Finn. This is a game against Lasker versus Thomas in 1936. Okay, first thing is you gotta go count one, two, three, and then a small r, that means a rook. And then one, then another small r, that's another rook. And right beside that, that's a king. And then you got this dash, that means I have to start over here. And now that's two p's, that means pawn pawn. A q, that's a small q, that's a queen. And now five. One, two, three, four, five, another dash, that means I start back over here. One, two, then I get another P, that's another pawn. And now BB, that means bishop, bishop. Okay, two black bishops. Okay, now I get four. No, wait. Oh, I get one, and now PP, that's two pawns. And now the dash again. Now four. One, two, three, four. And now a big P. So a big P means a white pawn. Okay, and now two. One, two, and an N. That means a black knight. Now another dash. And now one, two, and now a big B. That means a white bishop. 
and now three, one, two, three, and now another black pawn. And then one and a space. Okay, now we got one, two, and a big Q. That's a queen right here. And now and now one space and another P. Now three. One, two, three. And a black slash. Now P P. Now two white pawns. Now three again. One, two, three. And another pawn. And now, now another slash. That means we go back here. Now, now one, two. That's a space. Now another rook. And now one, two. And now another rook. And then, right beside the rook, is a king. And now, this is the final position in Finn. There's uh, the analog clock, and there's also the digital clock. The one thing about clocks you must know is, you can see there's flags up here. Now, if the flag happens to drop like this, it means this side loses. And it is up to this opponent, your opponent, to tell him, oh, your flag dropped. And if he doesn't say it, then the game keeps on going. But what happens if both flag drops? Oops, now there's two losses. Actually, this counts as a draw. If two flags go at the same time, they both drop. Most tournaments now these days are using digital clocks. The neat thing about digital clocks is you can add time when you're playing a game. Chess players call this increments. Every time you touch the clock, 30 seconds get added on to your time. Chess players like this because it's easier for them to make more moves. And in endgame, you don't get flagged. If you're going into chess tournaments, this is a rule you must know. It's called touch move. If you touch a piece, you must move it. If you touch your opponent's piece, you must capture it somehow, if it's legal to do so. Touch move is a very hard thing to get used to. I recommend you sitting on your hands when you're going into tournaments.